Hello and welcome to a new cryptology video in the classical cipher series. In this video, we want to speak about the pigband cipher. In the first part of the video, I want to introduce the pigband cipher. After that, I want to show you how you can create your own pigband cipher. In the third part of the video, I want to perform a small crypt analysis of the pigband cipher and compute the key space size of the pigband cipher. And finally, I want to break an original pigpen cipher using Cryptool 2. The pigpen cipher is also known as a Masonic or Freemason cipher. And the cipher has been allegedly used already in ancient times. And the Freemasons adopted the cipher and used it so many times that the cipher's name became Freemason cipher. The cipher itself is a simple substitution cipher and exchanges letters by geometric symbols. And the usage of symbols instead of letters does not provide any additional security. And you can say that the cipher is easy to solve. On the right side of the screen, you can see an example of a pigpen cipher shown in Giambattista della Porta's book De Furtivis Literarum Notis. And this here is my version from this book. It's from 1591. And here you can see examples of a pigpen cipher. So the cipher is very old and even older than this book here. So, how to create a pigpen cipher? In the first step, you draw some geometrical help figures. You draw this cross here, the second cross, and then this cross here, and this cross here. In the second step, you fill in the alphabet. You start, for instance, here by A, B, C, then go on D, E, F, G, H, I. And in the original pigpen cipher, you would go on using this cross here, then this cross here, and finally this cross here. But since I used for the presentation a nice font that I found online, which I will also link below the video here in the description, and the font uses as next symbol, not this position, but this here, I went on here filling the cross with letters. Then I went on here and went on here. But as I said, the original pigpen cipher first fills these two crosses and then these two crosses. And now let's have a look in step three, how you can encrypt or decrypt a message using this construction here. Let's encrypt as an example, for instance, the plain text, hello world. The first letter here, the H, you have to search for the geometrical symbol that replaces this H. And this symbol is this here. So how do you get this? You look into your construction where the H is, and then you take the border around your letter, and you have these three lines here, and you use these three lines as the ciphertext symbol. Then with the E we go on in the same manner. We look where is the E in our construction here, and the E has a complete square around it, so you write the square here. With the L, same applies. You look here, the L is in that open triangle here, so you write two times for the L, the open triangle here. And here you see that this is a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, since for the same letters you always use the same ciphertext symbols. Now we have an interesting letter, the O here, and the O is on the right cross here, and you see we have also this construction here. We have these three lines, this square which is open on the top. But the problem is, if we would use only this construction here, then it would be the same as the B. And therefore, in the second cross here, you wrote these dots below the letters. That means you take this symbol here, this U shape or square that is open here, and you put the dot inside so that you can distinguish between the O and the B. And same applies to the W here. The W is in this cross here, and the W also has a dot here. So you put the dot into this V shape here. Same applies to the O, same applies to the R here, the R is here. Then we have an L again, so this is this here. And then finally we have the D, which is this here. And this is the way how you encrypt using the pigpen cipher. And the decryption, of course, works in the reverse direction. So when we want to decrypt this symbol here, we go into our construction here, we look in this square that has is open here, and this is an H. 
And of course, when we have this dot here, we don't look at this here. We look, for instance, at this here and know that this here is an O. So it works in both directions. You can encrypt using this construction and you can decrypt using this construction. Now let's have a look at the crypt analysis of the pigpen cipher. And as I already said, the pigpen cipher is a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And we know from the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher that the key space size with 26 letters is 26 factorial, which is about 2 to the power of 88 keys. And here's the proof that this also applies to the pigpen cipher. Now let's have a look at this construction here where I added these numbers here. And these numbers stand for possible letters that I could fill in. When I start in the left corner here, we have 26 different letters and we have to choose one out of 26. So we have 26 positions or we have 26 possibilities here. So we have the 26 here. We, chose, we have chosen one, we go to the next one here and we have 25 letters left. The second position or head figure, we have 25 letters that we can put in. We choose one, we have 24 left. We choose one, we have 23 left and so on and so on. We go through all the positions and in the end, the last letter that remains, we put in the last position. So we have these uh, possibilities. We have to multiply all possibility numbers here. And this gives us 26 multiplied 25 multiplied 24 multiplied and so on and so on multiplied 1. And this equals to 26 factorial. So we know that the key space size of the pigpen cipher is 26 factorial. And of course, in each position, all letters are possible. That doesn't mean that we only have here 26 possible letters and here's one left. We can choose every letter here and of course we can choose every letter here. We have to distribute all the 26 letters over all these 26 positions. So how can we attack a pigpen cipher now? To attack a pigpen cipher, that's rather easy. We can use, as with every simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, frequency analysis. So you take your encrypted text, you count the symbols, you look for instance for the, for the symbol with the, which appears most of the times in the, in the cipher text that is probably the E. And then you go on with the second most probable letter and so on and you can easily decrypt the pigpen cipher using frequency analysis. And of course you can also use Crypt Tool 2 to attack this. And to attack a pigpen cipher in Crypt Tool 2, we have to map the symbols to self-chosen letters, and then we can use the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer component. So when we go back to this example here, and let's assume we do not know that this is Hello World, and we also do not know this um, construction here, then for the first symbol, for instance, you choose this here is an A, this here is a B, this is a C, C again, this is a D, and then you map all symbols that you have in the ciphertext to letters you choose by yourself. And then you use this transcription of letters that you have chosen and use this with the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer component in Crypto2. Now that we know how the pigpen cipher works, let's break an original pigpen cipher in Crypto2. And I have two tasks. The first task is that I want to take an original pigpen ciphertext from Klaus Schmee's blog and transcribe it. And as you probably all know, Klaus Schmee is a good friend of the Crypto2 team and a good friend of this channel. And he is a crypto author and blogger. And he blogs regularly about ciphertext and cryptology and classical ciphers. And I took some of his ciphertext he has shown on his channel and broke these with the help of Crypto2. And I want to take a ciphertext from his blog and I want to crypt analyze the ciphertext and break the cipher using Crypt2.2. And here is the ciphertext that I want to break. It's from a postcard that I found on Klaus Schmee's blog. I will link to his blog below in the video description. And what I want to do now is to assign letters to all the symbols here and then make a transcription out of these. So, I will copy the transcription to the notepad, but before I do this, I will just use here, this is Microsoft Paint, and I want to assign these letters in Paint and then copy these to notepad. I think this is easier. And I take red color for this, that I can see these better. And the U with a dot will be an A. So change this to a bigger size. And we have here an A. 
A. So A is the U with the dot. So I go through all the letters and search for all U with a dot. And it seems that this is a very rare symbol in this ciphertext. And when you ask yourself why I know that you read this postcard from left to right and bot to, uh, bot, uh, top to bottom here, here you see some numbers and these are written correctly. So I think that this is the right orientation. But as you can see, I cannot find any U with a dot. So I go for the L here and that's a B. So that's a B here. And I will go on now and then fast forward so that you have not to look every letter that I put here in in real time. So I think I completed the transcription. Probably there are some errors inside. It's really hard with this resolution and with these very similar symbols to make not errors, but we will see. I will now type this here into my text editor, and then I will copy the text into Crypto2 and analyze it with the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer. And what is important, I will also put spaces between the words. Even if there is a comma, I will just put a space here. And you see on this side here, there are also some symbols and I will not transcribe these and decrypt these. If you want to know what this is, you could try these on your own. So I copy now my transcription and go to Crypto2. I'm here now in Crypto2 and I use the monoalphabetic substitution and an analyzer here. And I want to try to decrypt my text. So I pasted the text in here. I use hill climbing. So let's give it a try. And I use English. So what do we have here? Here is the quest one more. I hope who are feeling better being. Okay, here are some errors, I think. But that doesn't look so bad. Okay, maybe, okay. Here, I think here has to be a space. Okay. Ah, okay, I know. We have to make spaces at the end that there are spaces between words because the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer removes the line breaks. So just one more. I think this is hope you are feeling better. Today, Tom is coming tomorrow, if fine, not certain about while I get to, 
I think this is the town. Leave again. Okay. So you see here are some errors. Just one more, I hope. So this must be a P here. You are feeling this is an F. Better. Maybe I forgot something. Bean. I don't know what this is. Har. I think this is today. This must be a T. Tom is coming tomorrow. This is a W here. If fine, not certain about why. I think this is while here. I get to somewhere. Windester, leave again. So you see, with some more effort, I could probably make a better transcription, but with this resolution here, it's really hard to follow this. But as you see, it's not very hard to break. So the pigpen cipher is not a very secure cipher today. And even in its time, it was not very secure since it's only a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. So if you have another pigpen cipher, you could also do the transcription as I did. Maybe take a little more time than I did for this video. Then you can also use the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer to break this cipher. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. It really helps me to grow the channel to make Crypto 2 more popular. And if you don't like the video, you know what to do. Give a thumbs down. And if you did not yet subscribe to our channel, I would be really happy if you do so. So see you in the next video.